KETV Newswatch 7 Commitment 2021 Special. A debate in the race for Omaha Mayor, incumbent Gene Stothard, and challenger R.J. Neary. Here is KETV Newswatch 7's Rob McCartney. Hello and welcome to our Commitment 2021 special. This hour is part of our ongoing effort to providing you with an unfiltered look at the candidates and the issues in the Omaha City election. We are joined here in our studio by incumbent Mayor Gene Stothert and challenger R.J. Neary. Thank you both for taking part okay. in the forum this afternoon. Well, for the next hour, I will be asking the candidates a series of questions. Neither candidate has been briefed on the topics prior to this debate. As for the format, each candidate will have one minute for an opening statement. After each question, each candidate will have 90 seconds to respond and a 30 second rebuttal. Toward the end of the hour, we may eliminate rebuttals to the last question to ensure that we have time for the closing statements. Now, a coin flip with the campaigns determine the order of opening and closing statements. And we begin with Mayor Stothard. You have one minute. Thank you, and, and thank you to KETV, and thank you, Rob, for hosting this debate tonight. I'm really looking forward to it. But before we get into the details of the debate, I would just like to use this time to thank every citizen in Omaha who worked together in 2020 and helped us navigate through the pandemic. We did not expect a worldwide pandemic. It knocked us down, but it didn't knock us out. I especially want to thank the first responders, our healthcare workers, and all of our essential workers for the job that they did. This again is how we get things done in Omaha. We work together and to see how Omaha cared about each other and, and made sure that we move forward during this pandemic, it was just unprecedented. So all of you, thank you on behalf of the city of Omaha and thank you for everything you have done to help us navigate the pandemic and get us through and on our way to recovery. Mr. Neer, you have one minute. Thank you, Rob, and thank you, KETV, for hosting this debate. I'm R.J. Neary and I'm running for mayor because I dream of a more connected city. A city that attracts and retains talent. A city that has housing options for everybody where housing is affordable, clean, and safe. I've been bringing people together in my business for 40 years. And that's what I'll do as your mayor. And that's what we'll do to bring people together, make things happen, and make Omaha the world-class city that it can be. Thank you for being here and listening to these issues tonight. Okay, now to our questions. Mayor Stothert will respond first, and we are going to start with public safety. Mm -hmm. Last year, Omaha saw 37 homicides, an increase from 23 in 2019. So far this year, there have been nine homicides, including one at West Roads Mall. Well, a person identifying himself as a 16-year-old who works at Westroads wrote the Omaha World Herald, recounting two shooting incidents there this spring. He described the fear of sheltering in place, wants to know what leaders will do to reduce gun violence, saying he doesn't feel safe in his hometown. What do you say to him tonight, Mayor? Sure, and, and thanks for that question. You know, we have had remarkable success with public safety in the last eight years, me working with Chief Schmatter at making our city safer. For example, from 2016 to 2019, our number of homicides was at a 30-year low. Our number of complaints against officers are low. The number of shootings are, are lower than they have ever been. But we did see an uptick last year in 2020, a small uptick. Uh, we saw that all over the country because of civil unrest. And we have approached our public safety in a three-prong approach. It's, it's prevention, intervention, and enforcement. And with all of the demands and restrictions with the pandemic, we, we weren't able to do the things that we normally do. Now that we can, and now that we're in recovery, Chief Schmutter and I feel very definitely that we will get back to pre-pandemic levels. But we have a very good police department. Uh, we are working hard to make our citizens safe. And that one-year uptick, we hope it's just an anomaly because of what we were seeing all over the country. Um, we have opened a new police precinct out west. Our, our response times to 911 calls are very low and they're going down. Our city is safer. The crime in 2020, last year during the pandemic, was actually, using our seven indexes that we use, was actually down 8.8%. So far this year, in 2021, it is down 14%. Those are statistics that I get from the chief of police. And so we are on our way to being a much safer city, and I want everybody in Omaha who lives here and works here and raises a family here to feel that they are safe. Thank you, Mrs. Mayor. Mr. Neary, you have a minute and a half. Thank you. 
Public safety is the mayor's number one job. And as this young man said, people don't feel safe in Omaha. And the World Herald wrote the article where crime is up. So <clears throat> with my public safety plan, we are going to get at the root problem of, of public safety. We're going to innovate and use more social services to get at the root problem and, and ask our officers to do less. You cannot police your, police your way out of every problem when it comes to public safety. And we need to get at the root problems of these issues and solve the problems that people face. And the, not everybody feels safe in Omaha, <clears throat> and we need to make sure that all people feel safe. And that's why I'm asking for a police auditor and a citizens review board to make sure that people feel safe and that, that they can trust what's going on with the public safety department. Ms. Mayor, you have 30 seconds. Public safety is the, the mayor's number one responsibility, and I'm very proud of the successes that we have made that made Omaha a much safer city. However, a city cannot be safe and in, in, in exist and be safe or be safer without law enforcement. Law enforcement is very, very important, and I will continue to work with our very excellent police department that we have. I get my crime data from the chief of police. We have data, we have statistics, and they are accurate, and that's where we get ours. And so the, the uh, successes that we have seen, the number of shootings, the number of officer-involved shootings, the number of homicides, it is a safe city, and we will work very, very hard to make it even safer. Mr. Neary, you have 30 seconds. I appreciate Chief Smoditer, but I don't believe that department heads in the city of Omaha ought to be out campaigning and endorsing candidates for any office. And when I'm mayor, I'm going to pass an ordinance that department heads in our, of our city employees cannot be endorsing or campaigning for candidates. And I don't think it's right. And a lot of people tell me when I'm out campaigning, they don't think it's right. Now, to our next, uh, next question goes first to Mr. Neary. Uh, do you believe the city needs to get tougher with its gun laws? Specifically, would you support more restrictions on access to guns by people with a history of mental illness or the establishment of gun-free zones in the city? Mr. Neary, you have a minute and a half. I'm happy um, to have Gabby Giffords Foundation endorse me because gun violence is a pandemic in this country. It's out of hand and we need safer uh, society and our guns laws need to be looked at. Gabby Giffords is a gun owner and she believes in owning guns. But yes, I do believe people that have mental illness should, and there should be background checks for people. We have too many guns and that and with people that shouldn't be having them, and we need to reduce the number of guns and, and increase the safety, our, our gun safety in our society. And that's what I'll do as mayor. Ms. Mayor, you have a minute and a half. When I took the oath of office for the mayor, I swore to, to support the Constitution of the United States. And even if you don't agree with it, there is a second amendment that allows private gun ownership in this country. This is a very, very difficult subject because the fact of the matter is, is that there's more guns in the United States than there are people. It's estimated that there's 400 million guns in the United States. And, and the, it's legal gun ownership is not what is causing the problem and not what is causing the issue. And you can't go door to door collecting all the guns. The issue about mental illness, we basically, on federal level and state level already, have a, the ability to restrict gun ownership if someone is adjudicated and found to be mentally ill. The issue is, and the problem is, is for those who aren't diagnosed or haven't been adjudicated. How do you find those people and how do you prevent them from causing injury or harm to others? I am all for listening to people. If we could reduce the number of people killed by guns, I am, I am opening to listening and seeing that what we could do 
to possibly reduce that. Um, I am all for harsher crime or harsher punishment for straw purchasers. Those are people that legally purchase a gun and then give it to someone for illegal purposes. Um, ghost guns, which people buy parts of guns and then put them together. We have to keep our eye on that. So there are uh, red flag laws, which some states have. Um, I would not be opposed to that because of that is where family members can petition a judge if they seem that someone and their family member is uh, mentally ill. But the, the, the bottom Mr. line Mayor, is... That's your, that's your time thank, on this. Thank okay. you. Mr. Neer, you have 30 seconds. The NRA has supported the mayor, and the NRA wants no gun restrictions. And the, the NRA is out of hand with... And, and part of the problem of the gun lobby, and that we need to get this under control, and I'm appreciative of President Biden calling this a pandemic, and it's something that we need to get control of. Ms. Mayor, you have 30 seconds. In my, my statement and, and, and what I said, it's not based on the NRA. It's based on what is in the U.S. Constitution. And there is a Second Amendment, and the citizens of the United States do have a right for private gun, uh, gun ownership, and I would not do anything to violate that right. Okay, our next question goes first to Mayor Stothert. Both you and Mr. Neary have said public safety is a priority. The debate centers over how that is achieved. Last year, protesters <clears throat> questioned budget priorities for the police department. How do you address their concerns and distrust while maintaining a secure and safe city? Mayor, a minute and a half. Absolutely. Once again, a city cannot be safe without law enforcement. And people have been talking about if the programs and social programs, and if we had those programs and they work, we would not need as many police officers. And the theory is good. But the fact of the matter is, <clears throat> excuse me, is you cannot defund the police or disassemble the police until those programs are enforced and that they are proved to work. We have an excellent police department. They listen to people. We have good community police relationships in the city of Omaha. And we listen to the protesters and we talk to them. And I asked the chief for a full report on all of the protests and the riots we had in Omaha and how we could learn from that. But once again, to defund or disassemble a police department now would be reckless, it would be irresponsible, and it's something that I will not do. Mr. Neary, you have 90 seconds. The public safety is the number one uh, priority for a mayor, and I have never said that I want to defund the police, and I wouldn't defund the police. But to police yourself out of every problem, including COVID, is not the answer. And not every, as I said, not everybody feels safe. And as you said, Mr. Mc, or Rob, that protesters want to know more about where the budget goes and more transparency. And I think it's transparency is the, is the way to build trust. And trust is what will unite us together and make us one community and reconnect us as a community. Ms. Mayor, you have 30 seconds. Thank you. You know, protesters or any citizen in Omaha can look at my budget. It is posted online the minute that I present the recommended budget to the city council, as well as the city's checkbook. Anybody could get online, as well as our capital improvement program. Anybody can get online at any time, and they could see where the revenue comes from. They could see where the revenue goes. I fund the police department, as well as the fire department, as well as every city department, with the amount of funding that they need to run effectively and efficiently. Mr. Neary, 30 seconds. It, the, the protesters were at the, the budget meeting and were not allowed to speak. And the, the, this is indicative of what happens at our city hall today. It's, we hear you, but we won't let you speak. And that won't happen when I'm mayor. When we move forward, we'll have open dialogue and we'll put that budget out ahead of time so that people can review it and, and ask advanced questions instead of in hindsight. That segues into our next question. It goes first to you, Mr. Neary. It's a social justice question. How did the social justice protests of 2020 actually, and the events still unfolding today, influence your approach to public service? Do you feel you should be an agent of change? Mr. Neary, a minute and a half. Thank you. I do feel like we need change. 
And I feel like we need more equity in our city. We're a great city, but we've studied, we've struggled with inequality. We have for a long time. And I have an equity plan to add an equity officer to my cabinet and to make sure our city services are delivered equitably throughout the city. And we will have a city hall that reflects and looks like our society in our community. And that's the way we're gonna build trust and build the future of Omaha with a city hall that looks and reflects what our city be, will become over the next 20 years. Mayor Stothert, minute and a half. Thank you. You know, on almost every city council agenda item, there is a, 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 a a part of the agenda for public comment and public hearing. And yes, the city council allows the public to speak, and so do I, and we support that. Mr. Neary must not have watched my budget presentation because that's exactly what it was. It was a presentation of the budget. It wasn't an open public hearing, although in the audience, it was open to the public. If you watch that, I was interrupted more than a dozen times with profanity and lewd language. That is something that we do not allow in the, in the legislative chamber. And so I was there to present the budget and give the budget to the city council. That's what I did, that's what I tried to do, that's what I've done every year since I've been mayor. And that was not a public hearing, but there's many other times that we do allow the public to speak and pe speak in public on, on most agenda items. Mr. Neary, you have 30 seconds. I think the solution to this is that to do what I want to do is to have a report card. Let's measure ourselves on what our policies are, what our budgets are, and let's fix the problems that Omaha has not been able to fix with segregation and redlining and substandard housing. Let's fix those items and grade ourselves and we'll see how we're doing. It'll help us give a, a sense of the conversation. Mayor Stother, 30 seconds. You know, you mentioned even redlining. Redlining has been eliminated in the late 60s with the Fair Housing Act. We have had a lot of successes in Omaha, and we have successes because we work together. We have successes in public safety and managing the budget. We have successes in development and jobs, and we have successes in making city government work better for the people. And so those are things that we need to continue with. We've made a lot of advances and a lot of, of uh, successes, and a lot of it is because we work together so well. I listen to people. I go out and do town hall meetings every year. I've done over 55 just to get people's comments. Next question goes first to Mayor Stothard, and we've addressed this a little bit. We discussed it. It comes from the Omaha Community Foundation's 2020 Landscape Listening Report. Now, one of the takeaways was that some residents do not feel represented in city government. There's a quote from the report. The community often feels segregated, and those who hold power or leadership positions are not necessarily representative of all residents. How do you address that apparent disconnect that some Omaha residents feel? Mm -hmm. Ms. Mayor, you have a minute and a half. Sure, and that's important, but I would say I think that sentiment is from the minority of people. Um, we work with groups all over the city. I appoint and have created um, uh, advisory boards. I have over 55 advisory boards that I have appointed and that we did this, some of them by executive order to make sure everybody has a voice. And when I, I look at different groups or different factions of our community, and I see areas and people that feel like they don't have a voice, then we create an advisory board so that they can work with city government and they can feel represented. For example, I've appointed a Native American, an active living, a millennial advisory, a LGBT advisory, and all those work very closely with my office to tell me their opinion and what goes on in the community. Just recently, we formed the first BID and on North 24th Street in North Omaha just to give those business owners and those folks that live in that designated area a way to have a voice and to be heard and work much closer with city government. So I would say that the feedback that I get, the feedback that I get in my office, more and more people feel connected with city government. They feel like they have a voice. 
and they feel like that they're working with the mayor's office and city government to make Omaha a better place. The most important thing is, is we do listen to them. And we've made a lot of changes and a lot of advances after listening to our community. And that's not just in certain parts of the city. It's all, it's from the Missouri River all the way out to the Elkhorn River. Everyone's voice is important. Mr. Neary, you have a minute and a half. Could you repeat that for me? Certainly. Uh, the question was, do you believe, in essence, that city government is representative of the residents, people in leadership positions? The question was, how do you address that apparent disconnect? I don't believe people are feeling heard in City Hall. And when I've been knocking doors all over the city, from east to west and north to south, they tell me that, that they're not heard. And I think an example was during the protest, we didn't go to leadership of communities that were hurting. We just tried to police our way out of it. And I have a plan to have more community conversations. These, this has been done in other cities where we actually sit down and discuss these things. I want to replace town halls with that. People can get the information off pot, for potholes and things off the, the internet. They don't need to hear all those reports, but we need to solve problems. And I want to reconnect our city and bring our city back together and make sure that everybody's heard. And that's what I'll do when I'm mayor. And we'll make it a more equitable, safe, and fair city. Mayor, you have 30 seconds. Sure. I think Mr. Neary needs to do his homework because we were not trying to police our way out. And we did go out into the community and we did listen to people. You know, I have one of the assembled one of the best groups of directors I think the city has ever had. My office alone, I have 19 employees in my office, 14 are women, five are men. I have three blacks and one Latino. We are always striving to be more diverse and more inclusive. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to greet a recruit class, police recruit class, and it is one of the most diverse we have ever had. We need to continue working together and need to get input from the community to make sure that we move forward and we remain diverse. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. Mr. Neer, you have 30 seconds. This is part of my plan to have a more equitable city. And the, we still have an address that city services are not spread throughout the community. And one of the reasons I'm running for mayor is that people have not had the chance to build home equity throughout the city. And that's been on my journey to get to this point today. And we need to rebuild that and rebuild our neighborhoods. Yeah, let's turn now to the impact of COVID-19. Looking back at the last year, hindsight being 2020, what policies have worked? What might have you done differently in the last year to put Omaha in a stronger position now as the city emerges from the pandemic? Mr. Neer, you have the first response. Thank you. Our COVID response was delayed and, and we, it's cost us a lot in jobs and health and people passing. I lost a brother-in-law uh, due to COVID and I, our, our whole countries suffered from this and our community suffered from this. And my COVID reset plan is to have a COVID manager and because we are not out of the woods on this yet. We still have strains, we still have people, 8% of the people haven't gotten their second shot that got their first shot. And I wanna set our city forward. We've missed Berkshire Hathaway meetings. We've missed College uh, World Series. And to this year's College World Series still down to 50%. It's hurting our community. And I wanna move our city forward with a plan and not just sit and wait for, for something to happen. And that's what I'll do with May, when I'm mayor. And we will make sure people of all communities uh, get vaccinated. We still have a lot of people that don't want to get vaccinated. And I've heard that in West Omaha and East Omaha. And we, need, we still have a lot of work to do to get this behind us. Ms. Mayor, 90 seconds. Thank you. Uh, the city of Omaha does not need a COVID czar. Um, the, the, I will take that responsibility. It is my responsibility as mayor to make sure that the city is, is navigating through um, this pandemic. I work very closely with our director of public health for Douglas County, Dr. Adi Poor, in an epidemic by city code. She becomes the city of Omaha's um, public health director. I had over 30 30 
different press conferences with Dr. Adi Poor. I'm having one tomorrow just to keep our citizens informed, up to date, let them know what the experts are saying at the Med Center. Many times the experts from the Med Center were standing shoulder to shoulder with us during our press conferences. Our response was not delayed either. I think Mr. Neary is wrong in saying that. You know, I made some very, very difficult decisions back in March when this first hit, and we had a, an estimate that we were going to have about a $100 million budget shortfall. I closed swimming pools. I closed community centers. We closed libraries. We canceled summer camps. We, we had a hiring and a purchasing freeze. Um, we delayed the police and fire recruit classes. These were immediate responses that we took to reduce spending to make sure that we were getting through the pandemic and that I would not have to lay off any essential full-time uh, personnel. And we did that. And you know, the mask ordinance is another thing that Mr. Neary needs to understand, that the mayor does not have the authority to issue a directive health measure. Um, only the governor and the director of public health, which is Dr. Poor, has that authority to do so. The city council can enact an ordinance, and I did support that ordinance. Mayor, thank you. Mr. Neer, you have 30 seconds. When lives are at stake, you don't stand behind uh, and, and watch. And you don't try to play politics with people's lives. And we had our first cases in March, and we were the last major city in August to have a mask mandate. If I was mayor, we would have had that earlier, and people were wanting it, and the Med Center was wanting it, and it didn't happen. Mr. Stotter, 30 seconds. We did not stand by and watch, that is for sure. You know, we took action from the very, very beginning. Um, we made a lot of changes, but I will say this, that Omaha, Douglas County, and the state of Nebraska has fared better than many cities across the country, including those that initiated the mask ordinance in the very beginning. So you can't really sit, stand there and say because a mask ordinance was not mandated early enough that there was a, there was a lot of negative um, repercussions from it. We acted immediately and the citizens of Omaha and our numbers are very good. Staying on the impact of COVID-19, restaurants and other Omaha businesses are struggling to find workers. Now Nebraska law allows cities to set their own minimum wage rates. Would you support that in Omaha, or what else can you do as mayor to make service jobs more appealing or to support the businesses that depend on them? Mayor Stothert, you have the first response, a minute and a half. Sure, and absolutely, our businesses, especially our, in our entertainment industry, hotels, motels, restaurants, bars, they really did suffer. A lot of that was from the, the lack of events that were canceled um, because of COVID. And the thing of it is, is as far as minimum wage, we need to get our workers back. A lot of the hotels, a lot of the restaurants are still having some problems getting their employees back to work. But if you want to just address the minimum wage, you know, in the, I, I truly feel that that should be market driven and it should always be market driven. The state of Nebraska, for example, our minimum wage is $9 an hour. That's $1.75 more than the federal minimum wage, which is now at $7.25. And I think that we really, really need to let the market drive what our minimum wage is. But we have also, the city of Omaha, during this time, we have offered help to our restaurants, to our, to our um, hotels to our entertainment industry. In fact, with the, the um, uh, Convention and Visitors Bureau, uh, with the surplus that we managed to have at the end of 2020, I gave them $3 million more in their budget to help them get back on their feet. And their budget is already, next year will be $2 million a year. So we are reacting with immediate um, funding to help all of those that, that industry recover and get back on their feet. But we will have the College World Series back this year, even though the NCAA made a determination of 50%. We will have the USA Swim Trials and we will have the Senior Open. So we're, we're getting back on our feet. Mr. Neary, you get a minute and a half. Omahans want a great city. And we will not get there with the inequities we have in our community. You mentioned earlier the Omaha Community Foundation's landscape project. 76% of the people living in poverty live in substandard housing. It's one of the main reasons I'm running for mayor. And we have too many people working two to three jobs. People can't get to the jobs because of our transit system isn't robust. And if we all, if we have higher wages, then people can afford better housing. People can afford 
housing, a better housing for their children, our children do better, our crimes go down, and that's the kind of Omaha we want to be. And that's the kind of Omaha I dream of. If, if we get this done, all, we all win. And, and we have, our <laughs> restaurants can have employees, people can move here. We need workers. The number one criteria for companies in America right now is not low taxes. It's not uh, incentives. It's employees. They want a workforce. And we need to work at getting a workforce here and creating a workforce and retaining and attracting talent. And that's what I'll do as mayor. Thank you. Ms. Mayor, you have nine, or 30 seconds. Yeah, you know, Omaha already is a great p city and we have great workers in Omaha. We were all hit by the pandemic. We weren't prepared for it. But as they say, you gotta play the hand you're dealt. Um, higher wages.